master, open. Plague of the Zombies, uh, I, I think in the same way that I think that Hammer were accidentally creating art, there's something about the fact that the, 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 the B parts of the programme feel less scrutinised, more playful, more inventive, means that both of those films, particularly Plague, uh, are more interesting than their um, A-picture uh, companions. I think there's something properly admirable and, and, and delicious about the idea of that little Cornish village set being sort of hammered <laughs> with, with use by, by, by the films that, that were sort of churned out in, uh, for 1966. There was a scene where um, Andre Morel decapitated me. And actually, the worst thing about that, from my point of view, was having to have a head made, um, which was plastered with parrots and, you know, thrown on, poured on the face, had to set. And I was, still am actually, very claustrophobic. And I remember my husband was with me, but I, I cracked and so did the plaster of Paris just before it was supposed to come off. So we had to take it all off and start again and going into makeup the next morning and seeing my head on a shelf, looking just like me, was very strange. Andre, oh, I was sort of hero worship because uh, Andre was, um, it was one of the, the, the major British actors of the time. And it was always a, it was a privilege to work with him, you know. It was always wonderful, you know, as a young actor, getting with the old, the old hands, you know, with Paul Schofield or Andre Morel or any of these. About? There would be so much rapport with an actor who had that kind of experience that you felt that somehow because you generate the business about making magic telling stories making magic and if you've got a really experienced actor there and you can look at them and and create that between you what has happened to them how should i know i don't know how but you do know you know very well what has happened to them are you mad i almost wish i was this business is so appalling the Reptile has a score by Don Banks, and uh, this story is about a woman who has been turned into a snake, or a sort of snake woman. Uh, and she's the daughter of a theologian who's gone out to the Far East, to Malaya and places like that. So Don Banks has cleverly used a kind of version of the sort of music he might have heard. Uh, and what he tries to imitate in the main title sequence of this film is the sound of the Gamelan Orchestra. This is a percussion band which uh, became quite fashionable, really, in the 20th century. Debussy heard it when it came to the Paris exhibition. It's quite an interesting idea. It's uh, the idea of using lots of tuned percussion. Uh, it also has xylophone glissandos, which are quite an unusual sound, to create a sort of appropriate music for this far eastern menace. Uh, and I like the way in the main title he integrates the sound effects. So the, the claps of thunder are kind of part of the score in a way. Out of all the hammer titles that we've uh, restored, the reptiles negative was in the best condition. Whether it had been uh, run less or less copies had been made, I don't know but it didn't have any ripped frames in it. As negative goes, something that's 40 years old, it was in very, very good condition. If you've seen The Plague of the Zombies, you need to see The Reptile, I think, uh, to sort of complete the circle. If you want to see the slightly shapeless brown jacket that Brooke Williams wore in The Plague of the Zombies again, then you can see David Barron wearing it in the prologue of The Reptile, just before being killed. So if for that reason alone, if only for that reason, uh, I think you should definitely catch the reptile. <laughs>